Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I hope you've been enjoying our updates so far. Um, so our last video, we actually showed the floor insulation being uh, poured. So if you haven't checked that out, please pop back and have a look. I'll pop a link up in the corner for you to go back to that video as well, or you can find it on our channel. Um, so we did our liquid floor insulation. So that's our EPS bead with our polyiso and our slurry mix. Um, so as you can see from behind me, uh, that is all installed there. We have our Dyson fans here as well, uh, just giving the place a little bit of heat. I actually, it's about three degrees outside right now and inside here is about 23 degrees. So 22, 23 degrees. So, and it's like they've only been running for about half an hour. So it's, it's very, very warm. Um, and that's just basically down to the fact now that we have our floor insulation in, we've got all of our wall, uh, wall insulation up. We've got all of our ceiling insulation in, all of our spray foam in. So in effect, we've got a, uh, a an insulated box, um, uh, within the house, within each room, so it's keeping all the heat in. Now, um, if you've looked at our previous videos, when we talked about our V-Lux and different things like that, you'll know that we decided to go for triple glazed, passive grade windows from Rationale, but we went for double glazed V-Lux windows. We didn't go for the triple glazed, simply because of the solar gain. So if you can imagine the heat coming through those windows in the middle of the day, particularly in the spring and in the summertime, it's gonna be a lot of heat coming in, and then if you imagine each one of those VLUX is going to be like a, a little radiator in the ceiling. So that's gonna be pumping heat into all of our extensions and into our attic space. Um, and that will trickle down obviously through the rest of the house. When that heat tries to get back out, those cavities are so small in the ceiling and in comparison to the overall ceiling height or ceiling area that uh, all of that um, spray foam is gonna bounce all of that, um, all of that heat back in. So, uh, you know, in our extensions here, we have about uh, 170 mil of uh, spray foam in between all of the rafters. So that's pushing all back in as well as our, our plasterboard. Um, and in our attic space, we have about 75, 80 mil of spray foam and then a 50 mil insulated board with a foil backing on it as well. So that's the main house completely insulated. All of our walls are insulated, all of our cavities are pumped, and then we have our floor insulation. So it's really, really quite toasty in here. So it's really, really good. Um, so as you probably know, uh, when we did the house and we put up all of our plasterboards, we left everything proud of the floor. Um, and that was basically because we didn't want the screed running in, touching off the plaster. Um, so what, what that's left us with now is uh, a situation with uh, our rooms where we've got a, a little bit of a, uh, a gap between where our subfloor and our insulation uh, is and, and where the wall actually starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick the camera around now and show you all of that. So we're in the formal sitting room here and as you can see if I just pop down here we've got our floor insulation in here so we've got our EPS bond bead with our slurry and our polyiso um, and that's all poured in it's lovely and level and it's it's quite set now it's a little bit strange because it's quite crunchy when you step on it because obviously there's the little air pockets in it there um from the eps bead but um it is quite solid now so as i said we have this gap now running all the way around each of our rooms which basically means that our screed uh, and our floor insulation won't touch off any of the plasterboard so what we don't want is we don't want any type of bridge between the flooring and the, the actual board itself. But that leaves us with the potential for a, a, a cold cavity. So now this was always the intention. We always knew we needed to uh, have this and we always designed it in such a way. So what do we do in this situation? Well, one option would be to come along and get our PIR boards like, like that's on the back of our plasterboard and cut it all in um, to, 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 to that cavity and push it in. And, and get a nice tight fit. That will take weeks upon weeks upon weeks. And in some of the areas, particularly in this area here, where we did an upstand for our six inch wall for our bathroom and stair stairway, there's very little depth. Like there's probably only about, you know, about 35, 40 mils. So you're talking an inch and a half um, of depth there. Whereas on all of the outside walls, you've got 102.5 mil plus whatever little gap and undulation there was from the wall. So you've got all these different thicknesses. And I can see straight away like that from this point here, you've maybe got 
60, 65 mil of a gap between the top of the insulation and the start of the, the underside of the board. Whereas if I move down to the other wall, that's probably only about 50 mil. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna have loads of gaps everywhere. So what do we do in that situation? Well, it's not a huge cavity to fill in most cases. The 100 mil is the biggest one on the outside walls. So what we decided to do was go and get our expanding foam and get basically do a, a, a spray job on all of this. So I've already started, th started this. I'll pop up a video of uh, how it was going in. But as you can see here, um, we've done all that spraying there. And this is, we started in the big room here just to get a bit of a, a tester of what it, what it might be like because expanding foam is a little bit unruly. You think you haven't put enough in and then there's way too much or you, put, you think you put enough in and then there isn't enough, you know? So it's a bit trial and error. So we started in this corner here. So you can see here, for example, this is already started expanding. So that's like, you've got a big bubble of expanding foam there. And the least amount of this we want, the, the, the better, because in effect, it's just money that you're gonna be cutting away and dumping. So, so as you can see, we're gonna fill all of the bottom of our walls in this way. So you're gonna have a really nice uh, seal and we will probably leave this to expand for about two to three days before we go cutting anything. So um, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a perfect seal then. That's gonna meet the floor insulation and it's gonna meet the top of, or the other side of the insulated plasterboard. And what we'll do then is we're gonna get our long blade and we're gonna run right around. So what we're gonna have is a perfect insulated block running from the top of the ridge all the way down to the wall plate all the way down the wall and onto the insulated floor then what we're going to do and i'll put it up a, i'll put up a video of this when we when we go and do this at the end of at the end of the week um we've got a expanding edge uh system which is a 150 mil rollout uh, sheet um, which is going to go along all of the wall and that's eight millimeters thick. So not too far off What we have here. This is a piece of underlay from some flooring that we did previously So we're gonna have something like this. It's got a foil back on it And then it's gonna have basically a foam section here and the back is actually sticky on the on the system that we're getting Now we did buy it from Germany. So it's gonna take a few days to get here And um, we thought we could buy it in Ireland, but when we went and priced it in Ireland it was too expensive. I'll pop a link in the description just to let you guys have a look at that. But what we're gonna do is, once all of that foam has been sprayed in, dried and cut flush, we're gonna roll that right around and it's got a little flap on it. So we're gonna be able to stick it to the floor, stick it to the wall. And then what will happen is the guys will come in, they'll put down all their plastic, all the underfloor heating pipes will go in and then we'll be able to pour our screed. And that's gonna give us, that eight millimeter of thickness is gonna give us an expansion for the screed as it heats up and cools down over the year, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to have a bit of expansion in the screed, and that's very very important because you don't want to crack in the screed. So, so basically, the job for now is to to get all of this foam done, uh, like we've done in the large extension. We've done this section here as well in the playroom. So you know it's it's not a tidy job when you start off, but when it's going to be finished, you're going to see how how neat and tidy it is, and you can kind of see so. This section here, you can see how far in. So the way I've done this is, this is um, this is a 50 mil insulated board, 52.5 mil. So it's a 12 and a half mil plaster and a 40 mil piece of insulation on the back. So when I sprayed this in, I would say out of that 52 and a half mil, we maybe filled about half of that with the foam. So then over the next day, next kind of day and a half, maybe even two days, that will expand out. Now, if you can imagine, we did exactly the same thing about two hours ago in this area. And as you can see, it's already, it's already expanded right out. So what, what will that mean is that we're gonna probably put in less into the cavities where we need to, um, and we'll get a little bit more out of our foam. Now, this room, when we talk about uh, the, the, the linear coverage of uh, spray foam here, we have an 11 meter room by seven meters wide. So 22, 29, and then we've got a two meter doorway. So we've got about 34 linear meters minus our doors, which are seven, three and a half each. Um, so uh, 34 minus uh, seven. So we've got 27 linear meters of, uh, of a cavity here. 
um, which is approximately 50 mil uh, deep. That cost us about four cans of spray foam. So when we extrapolate it out for the whole house, we're gonna need approximately 34 cans. And that includes the garage as well. So we bought 30 cans and we already had four of the suit all left over. So uh, what spray foam are we using? We're using the no nonsense. Now, the reason we're using this is pretty much all spray foams are the same. So this is the uh, Screwfix um, brand. We had some suit all left over. Just to give you an idea of cost wise, because an awful lot of people may comment on this and kind of say, wow, that's an expensive way of filling that cavity. The suit all for 10 bottles, which includes a gun and a cleaning bottle, that is about 80 euro, including VAT. I got 30 of the uh, no nonsense. I didn't need a gun because I already had a gun. Once you start doing a project like this, you're gonna have guns coming out of your ears for, for spray foam because you use it everywhere. Um, those 30 bottles cost me 127 euro. So you can you know, do the calculation. It's a lot cheaper to buy that stuff uh, than it is to buy the Sudol. Now I'm sure Sudol has some added benefits, but we're doing only a very small little section here. Now, what I will say is, we ran out of the Sudol at this point here. And there's absolutely no difference between the Sudol and the no nonsense. So again, you know, as I said, I'm sure the suit all has its benefits, but the no-nonsense is gonna be perfect for us here because we're gonna be cutting a bit of it off and it's only a little bit, and most of the wall already has PIR. As far as the floor goes, it's it's spectacular, to be honest with you. Um, this is about 125, 130 mil thick here. It was put down about two days ago. It's already dry. Um, as I walk out here, this is moving to about 50 to 60 mil coverage um, because this is the all part of the house. Again, completely dry. And the heat in the house is very, very noticeable. As you said, it's about three degrees outside, so I wouldn't expect it to be overly warm inside the house, but it's actually quite comfortable. It's comfortable enough for me not to have to wear a jacket um, or anything like that. I'm just wearing a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. So um, yeah, very, very, very happy with it. Um, as I said, if you haven't uh, looked at the video of it being poured, just uh, pop back um, or, or look at the link at the start of this video and you'll be able to see uh, it being poured, but it's absolutely fantastic stuff. Completely encapsulates all the pipes. And uh, as you can probably hear, it's a little bit crunchy underfoot, but really, really good stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep on, uh, keep on doing the foam here and uh, I'll pop back before the end of the video.
that's the formal sailing round completely done. Um, so just to give you an idea of kind of depth wise, it's 100 mil board, so we brought it out to approximately um, maybe about 70 mil from the wall to leaving about 30 mil of expansion. We will have a bit to cut off that, but you can see what we didn't want to do is bring it right out flush to the board because then you're going to have an awful lot of expansion and you'll be cutting off an awful lot of waste. So it's just really wasting money then in that case. So uh, that's all filled in nice and neat and tidy all the way around. So we'll then let that dry and then we can go ahead and cut that off. And um, we got in underneath the stairs all done as well. All in the playroom is completely finished. We have the mudroom or utility room done as well and our bathroom. And then obviously the, you can see this is done about three hours now. So it's a fair bit of expansion on all of that. So that's basically one side of the house done. Um, our next job is to go ahead and finish off the hallway at the front, do the front bedrooms, the bathroom, and then the master bedroom wing, and then we can move on out into the garage. Now there won't be as much in the garage because we already brought our uh, 100 mil boards right down to the floor there. It was kind of an error, but I got away with actually just cutting off the plasterboard on that so um so it'll be a little less filling to do but what we're going to do is let this harden for a couple of days and in my next video what i'll do is i'll show you finishing off the rest of the house and actually cutting off um this uh, insulation as well so you'll get to see the finished article and then we can go ahead and start sticking our expansion edge all the way around in readiness for our polythene to be laid and then our under four heating pipes to go in as well so I hope you've enjoyed the update. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. I'll pop all of the products that we use in the description, some links there as well, if anybody is doing a self build to try and help you guys out. If you do have any questions, let me know. Please like and subscribe. And if you like what you've seen in this video, have a look at the other videos here at the end. Uh, you can pop onto those links and see you again next time.